Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Thunder Fan TV. Back at you, another video about the content. In this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, listen, man, so uh, I want to get this video out yesterday. A lot of stuff came up, couldn't do it. Uh, a little bit busy right now. Getting ready to travel, going out the country for the first time. Excited about that, right? Uh, going to Spain and whatnot. Uh, so I'm still going to be doing the Ravens videos and things like that. Obviously, different time zones. So I'm going to get a little bit uh, used to that, adjusted to that. You know, only be like a week and a half. But uh, watching a game and over there in Spain, be doing all of that. So still going to get the videos on things like that. But, you know, it might just be a little bit different as far as the time to go. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the injury report for tomorrow. Definitely going to try my best to do that. Um, anyway, this video, I just want to do a quick little Ravens update. You know, Kyle Hamilton, uh, uh, Ronnie Stanley injuries. You know, what did I see from the offense and the game overall versus the Panthers? Now that we're kind of removed from that, just to get the final thoughts on that game and let's, let's move on to the next. All right. So first, I want to start off with the injuries, right? So um, Ronnie Stanley, Kyle Hamilton both went out injured. John Harbaugh kind of gave a little bit of update yesterday saying that both of those guys, as you probably have already heard, are trending in the right direction. Um, that, that's the word he used for Ronnie Stanley. He said that um, as far as Kyle Hamilton goes, his knee is stable. Now, they still haven't gotten the results back from both guys, it looks like. So tomorrow's injury will probably be really telling as far as, you know, where, what, what is Kyle Hamilton listed as. Now, for Ronnie Stanley, he doesn't usually practice on Wednesday or Thursday. He usually comes back and practice only on Friday. So him not practicing on Wednesday won't tell us much, but if they have a, um, it's usually rest, but it's probably going to be an injury designation on at this time as far as like an ankle or something like that. And then, um, we'll see if there, anything other comes out where there's like, oh, they're out multiple weeks. Right. But it sounds like both guys as of right now, the season is not over. Um, they could play in the next game. We don't know, but at the very least, their season is not over. So that's good. All right. Uh, so speaking of Kyle Hamilton, now, I usually take PFF grades with a grain of salt. Uh, usually people only use them when it fits their agenda and everything like that. So that's always fun. But um, they have Kyle Hamilton as the number one greatest safety in the NFL this season. He has a grade of, I believe it's 86.9, the highest grade in the NFL. Um, now, I'm not going to get into the tack of like, oh, is he the best safety in the league? That's where you don't use PFF grades like that. But I will say this. It's very apparent that he's growing in confidence that he's playing like one of the better players on this Ravens defense. This Carolina game was really one of his best games. Um, you know, watching the All-22 back, even watching um, All-22 films, you know, a great Ravens guy. Uh, he talked about Kyle Hamilton, right? Um, some of the plays I mentioned in the, um, in, the, in, the, in the recap, he would mention, you know, like how he was driving guys back, uh, forcing setting the edge. Uh, just playing really confident in space. He doesn't seem to be thinking anymore as far as he is reacting and he's playing. Now, obviously, he's still processing at a high level. So when I say he's not thinking, it doesn't mean he's flying blind, nothing like that. It just means that he's playing with so much more confidence out there. And it's a beautiful thing to see. So shout out to Kyle Hamilton. Is he the best safety in the NFL? No, we're not saying that. I'm not saying that. Uh, but he is playing really well. And the PFF grade, it is what it is. All right. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is this Ravens offense versus the Carolina Panthers because I wanted to do a video yesterday, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because now today I got to watch the All-22 film for myself, just, just watching it for me. Um, and I wanted to look at one guy. I wanted to look at Devin DuVernay, right? Because every time one of these wide receivers don't have a good game, especially DuVernay, we get a lot of tweets and posts about, oh, every time Devin DuVernay's up against a top-flight cornerback or a league-average cornerback, he gets put in a, he gets put in a shell, you know, he gets, he gets locked up. Uh, they, they'll, they'll say things on Twitter like, oh, Devin DuVernay, J.C. Horn got him in hell right now. Right? Things like that, right? So I wanted to watch it for myself, see if that's true. Is that what's happening? And from what I watched, no, that's, that's, that's not really what's happening. Not saying that, oh, he broke J.C. Horn off. Not saying that um, he was always open. Um, definitely not saying those kind of things. But he wasn't really clamped, if, if that makes sense. So um, I just looked at a couple things now. So I first played the game, he ran a, a deep corner route. Uh, Lamar rolls up to the right side of the field where, where Devin DuVernay is about 25, 30 yards down the field. But the route develops too long, takes too long to develop, honestly. So he just throws back across the field to Mark Andrews. They did try two attempted screens to Devin DuVernay. One of them, Lamar gave up on the play because it was, he did the right thing because the play was going to get blown up. Um, the only thing he could deal in on that play was throw the ball away and said he takes a hit. He takes a hit. That's one thing Lamar did do a lot versus Carolina. That was that was one game where I've seen him 
get hit a lot. And not because O line and letting players do or anything like that, but just like on the edge, he didn't he didn't really get down as much as he usually does. So um, that was interesting um, on that game. Um, there was one fake screen to Duvernay that ended up being a running back screen that Kane and Drake dropped, so that went nowhere. But the main issue that was with Devin Duvernay was the kind of routes that he was designed on. A lot of times he's lined up as an outside receiver. That's one you don't need to. He doesn't need to be out there all the time. Two. A lot of outbreaking routes, corner routes, things like that. Uh, when he wasn't a slot, there's a couple of slot fades, a couple of straight streak routes. Any cornerback with decent speed is just going to lock up a straight up slot fade, a straight up streak route, especially if they're playing off coverage. A lot of these times, these streak routes are being ran into off coverage. So they, they already given five or seven yards of space. He's running right into it. That's not his fault. That's the route that's called. Right? Now... Um, they, he did run a couple other routes. Now he ran a curl route on JC Horn. JC Horn was playing about ten, uh, seven to ten yards off. He runs an eight yard curl route. He's open. Now Lamar doesn't pass him the ball correctly because there's a linebacker in the passing lane that's gonna make the throw extremely difficult. He throws it. To, I think Marcus Roberts was on the out route, easy. And that's something that popped up. Like really, he ran a lot of out routes. And speaking of that, Devin Duvernay was open on the same kind of out routes that Marcus Robinson was open on. Devin Duvernay was as too. But Lamar trusts the Marcus. He went that direction. And rightly so. It wasn't a mistake. Nothing like that. There was opportunities to get Duvernay the ball. It just didn't happen. Okay. Uh, another one. He ran a slant route. Boom. Stacked the corner. Got in on a slant route. Shaq Thompson, the linebacker underneath, jumps it. So Lamar goes to his next read. Perfect play. Darvin Duvernay is coming across. He's open. Again, you know, he wasted another, another second. He's open. But Lamar's already moved on. Once again, that's the right play. He saw the linebacker come down. He got off the read. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, but main thing, like I was saying, there was opportunity to get Devin Duvernay the ball. He wasn't running routes and being shackled. Um, I just think he wasn't always set up to succeed in the routes that he was called for. He doesn't get a lot of so like how Demarcus Robinson had like that big play on that uh, slant post, whatever you want to call it. Duvernay doesn't get a lot of those. Right. Not saying that Demarcus Robinson shouldn't get it because he did a great job with it. Um, but Duvernay doesn't get to run across the field like that. Now, if you want to line Duvernay up in the slot, I would love to see some more drag routes hit him quick. Boom. Like, like, like they tried to do on the one catch he did get on a motion flat route. Man, get the ball in his hands in space. Or uh, crossing routes. You know, let him run. So how Mark Andrews runs a 15, 20-yard crossing route, let Devin Duvernay run that before. I've said this many times. Let him give a shot at running that, right? Um, now, the passing offense overall... It's kind of the same old, same old. They fell back to, or Greg Roman fell back into the old kind of things that we saw before. Uh, a lot of long developing routes. Um, if it wasn't a quick out routes, then the rest of the routes were long developing. Uh, multiple tight end sets. Um, now, I had no problem with multiple tight end sets. I actually like them because we have a guy like Isaiah Likely. Him and Andrews on the field is a beautiful combination. Love it. The problem is Isaiah Likely in this past game only had 32% of the snaps, right? I say this all the time. Nothing against Josh Oliver. He's been a really, really good player this year. He's grown exponentially this year, right? He was a guy that was an easy cut candidate for me coming into the season. Easy one. But he's made the roster. He's been on the team. He's been a valuable member. But him and Isaiah likely don't need to be playing the same amount of snaps. Josh Oliver was around that 30% range as well, okay? If you're going to run multiple tight end sets, I would, like, I would rather see Likely out there. Likely has a good blocking grade. He's getting better at blocking as well. So... The whole reason he wasn't out there supposedly was supposedly because of the blocking. That doesn't seem to be his main issue as of right now. He's getting better at it. So let's get him out there some more. All right. Um, Patrick Ricard on the field less. Only 55% of the snaps this past game, which is less. You know, usually 60, 65, sometimes even 70% for Patrick Ricard. So he's on the field less. It's still puzzling that they threw a wheel route to him, but maybe that's why they did it because it's the element of surprise. Um, he dropped it. I'm not sure Patrick Carr expected to get the ball on that play. Lamar does a beautiful pass to him. It just goes through his hands. Uh, so, yeah, I, it's kind of, you know, just, just weird. Kind of puzzling decision. Not the throw, but just the play call in general. Uh, spacing is still an issue at times. It's still an issue. Uh, one play in particular, third and eight. They got four wide receivers round up on one side of the field, on, the, on the left side of the field. Well, it's really three wide receivers and a tight end. I think Andrews is over there. And the three inside, closer to the line of scrimmage, they all run, it's third and eight, so they all run five-yard in routes, okay? They all run like five-yard in routes. 
then Devin Duvernay, who's the outside receiver, runs like a, a fade route, kind of. Because first he comes in and fades out. It's a weird-looking route. But the point is, one, the spacing out there wasn't good, right? Anybody, they throw to anybody, they're tackled immediately. There's no first down anyway. Second of all, if Duvernay runs any kind of in-breaking route, he's literally wide open, right? So it's just like the route combinations still aren't always the greatest. It still isn't there. You're not going to hit on every single play. That's not what I'm asking Greg Roman to do. Uh, but it has to be better, right? I've gone, I've kind of given up on the whole firing Greg Roman thing. Um, I've done videos about that and whatever. If Harbaugh decides to do it, that's when it'll happen. I don't know if that's going to happen. So I've, that train has passed for me. I don't, I'm not probably, unless the Ravens have a really, really bad display and it cost them a game, like they lose, like, like they would have lost this Panthers game, then maybe you get that. But I'm, I'm not going to do that because it's a waste of energy. All right. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's kind of the main notes I got from the game, right? The, the same old same on the offense as far as the passing game goes. Uh, Demarcus Robinson looked good watching it again. He's fast. He breaks off routes. He's a really good route runner. Um, but, yeah, the passing game is kind of the same old same old, bro. Uh, so I wanted to get my last thoughts about this game. Like, this, this Panthers game was frustrating offensively. I thought Lamar Jackson was quick, decisive, efficient in his, in his, in his play, so he played well. You know, don't take anything away from that. Um, I did want to talk about Morgan Moses because he's getting a lot of hate for letting a free rusher go. Um, that's what he was supposed to do. I said it in the recap. Then I saw Cole Jackson talk about two guys watching football. Um, you know, obviously subscribe to his channel. Y'all probably already are. <laughs> another, another good Ravens YouTuber. Um, but he put it on Twitter that that's what Morgan Moses is supposed to do. You you don't. I know it's like, oh, well, you're supposed to block Brian, Brian Burns. He's the better guy. But... Not really. I mean, if Brian Burns was the inside guy, he would have got blocked. But he was the outside guy, so he didn't. Is what it is. Blocking the guy on the inside, leaving the outside guy free, like I said, gives Lamar Jackson a better chance to either step up and get out or completely round the defender. It didn't happen. But if you let the guy on the inside come free, it's a free shot on Lamar Jackson. Like a, a knockout blow. I mean, you don't really get that in today's kind of NFL. But it's a chance. It's a possibility that that can happen if Morgan Moses lets that inside guy go free. And now you're really mad at Morgan Moses if that happens. All right, so those are my final thoughts about this Ravens and Panthers game. Just a quick little update on um, you know the channel, where it's going, what it's next we can have. And also updates on Kyle Hamilton and Ronnie Stanley. Hopefully those guys are good. It seems like it's trending in the right direction. Um, so hope maybe, maybe they play this week, maybe they don't. But it doesn't seem like those guys are going to be out too long. Um, so if you guys got any comments on this video, obviously leave it down there. I love the discussion about the Ravens, and we'll get to it, man. It's your boy Gabriel. There's another fan TV. I'm out.